If you've been watching my streams lately, you've probably heard me talking about the topological maps that Marit Bo Peep and I have been making of the Spyro 1 levels. Well, first, I'm happy to say that they're done, and I think they look really good. I'm happy with how they turned out. I have a download link in the description of the video, as well as an imager album uh, showing them. If you want to see them or you want to play around with them yourself, you can do that. The purpose of this video, though, is to talk about some interesting things that we ran into while making them. First, I'd like to talk about how we made the maps a little bit. Farnia recently found a memory address that shows you the height of the floor below Spyro. With that, we were able to sort of turn Spyro into a scanner, where we wrote a script that would send Spyro to a bunch of points on the map. We would take note of the height of the floor below Spyro at each of those points, and then we were able to use that data to draw these maps. If you saw any of my streams lately where Spyro was flying miles above the level, that's what you were seeing, was Spyro scanning the level. Some of the levels were very large, they would take hours to scan through. For the largest ones, I would usually leave them running overnight so that I wasn't just waiting around for them to finish. And that kind of leads me to the first strange thing that we found. One night, I left the scanner running while in Peacekeeper's homeworld. But when I woke up, Spyro was in Dr. Shemp. Now, again, he was locked very, very high in the air. He could not have moved down far enough to hit the portal. So the question is, how did Spyro enter a level while flying above the map? I ran the script a few more times to see if this would keep happening, and sure enough, Spyro kept entering Shemp when he would fly above the portal. I was able to eventually get footage of this, and as you can see, there's nothing obviously wrong going on, he just goes above the portal and then enters the level as if it was normal. After a bit of digging, we were able to get this to happen on a few more portals as well. We were able to get it to work on Dr. Shemp, Night Flight, Icy Flight, and Dark Passage. Now, we don't know exactly why this happens, uh, but the one thing we did notice these four levels have in common is that the top of the archway for the portals, uh, for each of these four portals, does not have collision. So our current theory is that something about the arches not having collision is causing some kind of an error in bounding the portal entrance, and... Effectively, this makes it so that you can enter any of these four portals pretty much infinitely high in the air, as long as you fly directly over the center of the portals. Now, I do encourage you to try to look into this yourself. Like I said, we do not fully understand why this happens yet. Uh, everything I said is basically just a guess based on our current observations. The easiest way to do it yourself is to load up the game in BizHawk, and do some memory manipulation to give yourself free flight, or to just send yourself arbitrarily high. If you want to do it without any memory manipulation, I think your best bet is probably going to be to try to damage boost using the cannons in Peacekeeper's homeworld, but obviously that is not exactly going to be easy. The second interesting thing I wanted to talk about is actually still an open question. We were not able to solve this particular problem. Uh, we were having a hard time getting a clean scan of Stone Hill. Normally, when we try to scan a level, we would leave Spyro in a charging state locked high in the air. If he was just in a normal falling state, uh, after a few seconds, the game would void him out and try to respawn him, which would cause all kinds of problems with the script we were running. But if we leave him in a charging state, then it would work fine. It would scan the level, it'd be great. But for some reason, in Stone Hill, again, despite being very high above the level, something kept 
flopping Spyro out of the charging state. Now, it wasn't long before we found a workaround to just be able to finish the scan. So like I said, we did not actually figure out what was causing this problem and solve it. Uh, there are a lot of guesses at what it might be. Potentially, it's the wall at the edge of the level interacting with Spyro in a strange way. Potentially, it's the rams trying to attack Spyro, and that's causing something weird to happen, but we really don't know for sure. So if anybody wants to look into this, please, please let us know what you find out about it. We're really curious what was going on with this. Now, those were the main two things that I wanted to talk about here. There were a few other miscellaneous interesting things that came up, like I found it interesting how close uh, some of the levels were to the lower bounds of the map, uh, or one time I ended up in a horizontal parallel universe for Peacekeeper's homeworld, and once for Icy Flight, that was kind of fun to play around in, but nothing really worth going into detail over. Now, before I end the video, I'd quickly like to thank Marip Bo Peep for the enormous help that she was on this, for scanning a bunch of the levels, for helping me write the scanning script, for helping me write the script that converted the scan data into images. She was a massive help on this project. I'd also like to thank Farnia for all of the work he's been doing, looking through the memory values for the game. We have made quite a few interesting discoveries because of the work he has done, so massive thanks to both of them. If you have any specific questions about the maps, how to make them yourself, how to recolor them yourself, feel free to reach out to me on Discord or Twitch. I'm always happy to answer questions. Thank you for watching.